almost since we started this channel, our viewers have been requesting that we give them a review of a car from Neo, one of the most talked about electric car makers, especially these days. Well, thanks to the generosity of one fan, thanks Nathan, we are going to be able to do just that. We will be giving you a full review of their latest model, the EC6, with a starting price around $54,000 and rising almost to $80,000 for a top spec car like this one, NIO is clearly trying to offer a more premium experience than the more affordable Chinese EVs we usually drive on this channel. The question is, did they succeed? Starting from the outside, I like the way that the EC6 and other NEOs kind of bridge the gap between the traditional styling of an internal combustion vehicle with its grille and the blank grillless face of a lot of other electric cars. It manages to look both futuristic and familiar at the same time. Now, the face of the EC6 is pretty much identical to that of the ES6, which means we have this dramatic slash of a daytime running light up here as well as a vertical lower headlight unit. Personally, I would prefer a bit of a splash of sportiness to go with the coupe roofline. Speaking of the roofline, I've never really been a big fan of coupe SUVs. I think most of them have very weird proportions. The Mercedes-Benz GLC coupe, for example, looks like a big insect, and the BMW X4 is just... yeah. With that in mind, and while I don't find the EC6 to be beautiful, I think it is at least a little bit more elegant and less hunchbacked than many of its competitors. Something that all Neo seem to have in common is this black plastic cladding that goes around the entirety of the vehicle. This is a pretty common set on more affordable cars, but you know where you won't often see it? On the latest SUVs from Mercedes-Benz, Audi, or BMW. That's because, at least if you ask me, it makes it look a little bit less upscale. On lighter color cars, the plastic up front also gives it kind of a jutting lip look. Thankfully, this darker color manages to avoid that for the most part. My favorite part of the design, however, is the rear end. I really like Neo's signature spark beat taillights. They're both unique and expressive. Despite the steep roof, the EC6 still manages to offer a decent 510 liters of space, though that's about 40 liters shy of the GLC coupe. I might be a bit lukewarm on the exterior styling of the EC6, but I am a full-on fan of the interior. This is the most luxurious EV I have ever spent time inside of. Nothing short of a Mercedes-Benz EQC can outdo this in terms of material quality and comfort. Everything that you touch feels soft and expensive. Everything. I also love the design of the shifter here. It's very simple. You rest your palm, pull, or push, and then you can hit the P over here to put it into park. It takes up almost no space here on the center console and feels very high quality when you use it. The center screen is well sized and the UI is attractive and easy to operate. I really like the physical buttons and the dial that allow you to control important functions like the volume and the driving mode. The system is fast and intuitive. Everything you're looking for falls to hand quite easily. Our only complaint is the level of distortion on the view from the cameras. There is a lot. And with a rear window this small and pillars this thick, good cameras would really come in handy. Rear legroom in the EC6 is adequate, and the coupe style roofline doesn't intrude on headspace as much as you might think. The seat cushions are a bit on the short side, however, and the high floor means that adults aren't going to be happy back here for especially long rides. Children, however, will be good to go. EC6 buyers can choose between two different ternary lithium batteries. A 70 kilowatt hour battery offering 440 kilometers of NEDC range, or a 100 kilowatt hour option that will go a claimed 610 kilometers on a full charge. Both batteries take a little less than an hour to recharge using a DC fast charger, and 10 and 15 hours respectively on a regular home outlet. The true innovation from NEO, however, is its widespread use of battery swapping, with battery swapping stations strategically placed along major roadways here in China. It's even possible to purchase a 70 kilowatt hour model, then simply pay to rent a 100 kilowatt hour battery that you can swap in at any of those stations. 
NIO has also announced plans to allow consumers to purchase their cars at a lower price and simply lease their battery, potentially offering some relief to buyers who are worried about depreciation on their electric car. Thing is, the owner had only one request when he gave us this car. Don't swap the battery. He plans on using the feature in the future, but I think understandably, he's hesitant to switch out his brand new battery for one that could be older and a bit more degraded. I'm sure NEO has ways of testing and removing degraded batteries from circulation, but I think this is a good example of a small mental barrier that could get in the way of somebody utilizing this feature. Still, it seems like a popular option among NEO owners. NEO claims to have completed more than 500,000 battery swaps across their 143 stations here in China. Regardless of which battery you choose, the EC6 comes in two power levels. The Sport trim, which gives you 320 kilowatts and 610 newton meters of torque, or the Performance trim, which steps things up to 400 kilowatts and 725 newton meters of torque. The Sport trim uses permanent magnet motors in both the front and the rear, while the Performance version uses a permanent magnet motor in the front and an induction motor in the rear. 0 to 100 km per hour times range from 5.6 seconds for the Sport down to 4.5 seconds for the performance. We're currently driving a performance version with a 70 kilowatt hour battery pack. I think this is kind of an ideal spec because it costs less upfront, but you retain the option to switch in a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack farther down the road. As the numbers would suggest, this thing is quick. But what I think stands out even more is just how comfortable it is. Thanks to the air suspension, it just kind of floats down the road, ignoring imperfections. Also, thanks to the air, air suspension, it can do things like uh, lower the car when you park it, making for easier ingress and egress. It can also lower the car after sustained high speeds, improving aerodynamics just a little bit. NEO offers their own competitor to Tesla's autopilot called NEOPILOT. This particular car came equipped with the complete package, a roughly $6,000 option that allows the car to do things like navigate on and off ramps, pass other vehicles, merge lanes, and navigate planned routes. Basically, it's NEO's version of FSD. We weren't able to do a thorough review given our limited time with the car, but it doesn't quite seem to measure up to Tesla's system. The lane changing feature, for example, was quite slow. Hopefully, we'll get a chance at a more extensive review in the future. My only major complaint when it comes to driving the EC6 is when it comes to range. This thing delivers something like 65% efficiency in mixed driving. What I mean by that is that if the car says it'll go 100 kilometers, it really means about 65. Compare that to the 80% efficiency of the Model 3 that we have driven, and you can see that battery management seems like a big area of improvement for NEO. It also means that the battery swapping technology makes a bit more sense. When NEO debuted their ET7 sedan concept late last year, NEO president Qin Li Hong made a lot of waves when he said that it wouldn't just compete with the Tesla Model S, but also cars like the BMW 7 Series. Was it even possible, some people asked, for a small Chinese EV startup to provide luxury at that level? Well, having driven the EC6, my honest answer is, I think they already are. At $80,000, this thing truly earns its price tag by offering the type of technology and driving experience that you would expect for a car that expensive. Add in innovations like battery swapping and I'd argue it's actually kind of a bargain. All right, that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching.